Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Christian Tabernacle Church here in Belton, Texas. We're pl we're glad to see you're here. We're blessed that you're you're uh, viewing us by a satellite. It's going to be a wonderful service because Jesus is involved in this service. Amen. Amen. And we would like to ask each and every one of you to bow your heads or stand where you are and pray with us as we welcome Him into this service. Father Jesus, we thank you, Lord. For what you're about to do, we thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand upon us, O oh God. And Lord, we thank we're thankful, Lord, that we can draw near unto you this morning, O oh God, that we may present ourselves as living sacrifices unto you, O oh God. We're thankful, Lord, for your word. We're thankful for your very, very presence in this place, O oh God, and here and all in all the homes abroad. Lord God, we thank you, and we ask you, Jesus, to just have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So worship with us.
Amen. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Mighty God. You, there are so many needs in the world today. We can't. We could. We couldn't name them all. I tell you that. But you know, the Bible says that if if we just but ask, feel for Jesus, then we will find him. He is right there in your living room. He's right here in this place. He is omnipresent, he, which means that he is everywhere. And I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. And I know that if you're watching this right now, that you believe it as well. There are many things we could be doing other than worshiping God right now. But, but I'm so thankful to be in the, amongst a group of people that, that choose to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. And while we're in the spirit, let's, I, I, like, I have some prayer requests that I'd like to call out. Um, many, many of them are in small print here, which I can't see. Amen. Uh, but those of you who are watching, we ask you to, to lay hands on those in your home. Even You know, the, you, by the power, the power of Jesus, we can call upon his name and we can, we can ask for healing. We can ask for, for deliverance. We can ask for God for... What, whatever we can ask for in his name, it can be done. If we believe. Amen. So I would like to, at this time, pray. Uh, we have some of our elders, Sister Cooper, Sister Bass, Anita Hernandez, Janie Salinas, and there are many, many, many others. Uh, the Severs family. Uh, we love and miss these people. We I so wish that we could gather again, and, and, I, and I know I, I, I want to look beyond this COVID-19, and I believe that there's coming a day, maybe soon, hopefully not soon, hopefully, I wish it were sooner, but there's coming a day we're all going to be gathered again, and beyond that, we're all going to be gathered in heaven, amen? So let's let's call these names out, and those who are viewing by Facebook, uh, Let's, let's ask the Lord right now to, to, get, to get involved in our lives and get involved in our problems as we draw near unto Him. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, for these names that have been called out. Father, those who are, who are at home right now calling out names, Lord, laying hands upon those in Jesus. We ask for the power of the Holy Ghost, O oh God. Jesus, that you would have your way in the hearts and the lives of your people, Jesus. That we take these opportunities, Lord Jesus. To draw near unto you, Lord God. We can't be close enough in these times, oh God. And Father, we know that there's a hunger in the land, a hunger for your heart, oh God. And Father, we ask that as your blessings are being poured upon their people, those believers and non believers, oh God, that all would be receptive unto you and unto your word, oh God. In these times, oh God, we thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your love that you have commanded towards us, oh God. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Worship with us.
say that to our church family, uh, we miss you very much, but we are grateful that you're able to tune in with us here through Facebook and all of those uh, that have joined us as well. Uh, we, we thank the good Lord that, that God has made a way for this to happen. Amen. Amen. This virus, I'm sure, will pass. Uh, you know, God is in control. And uh, I do believe that uh, God's hand is involved in all of this. And, uh, you know, he has a way of turning bad things into good things. Amen. And uh, bringing the good out of every situation and every circumstance. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we thank you for joining us today. Praise God. We're going to, at this time, we're going to get into the word of the Lord. This is pure. Praise God. Amen. I do feel that the Lord uh, has placed something upon my heart to minister to you today. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. What beautiful singing. Praise God. I want to. Give a shout out to my friend Dennis. I think he's going to be listening this morning. Praise God. Amen. And uh, him and his family, hopefully. But I want to say hi. Thank you for tuning in. Praise God. While you're standing uh, here, there's those that are in the congregation. Uh, some have chosen to come, and that is fine. We're not telling anybody they can't. Uh, but many have chosen to stay at home, and that's fine, too. Uh, let everybody just, uh, you know, what, how they feel in their own heart, what they need to do. But nonetheless, God is here and he's there with you too. You've heard that said already this morning, I believe. But uh, we're going to look in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. And we're going to read six verses of Scripture. Amen. And it goes like this. It says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country. Jesus did. And his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying from whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. They were offended. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled. Can you say that with me? He marveled. He marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. If you'll join me in prayer, let's ask God to touch us today. Amen. Lord, would you, Jesus, we call upon you. Would you touch us today? God, with the word of the Lord, thank you for what you've already done. The lives you've ministered to as uh, those uh, that have heard this morning have been reaching out to you and worshiping. Praise God. We know that our praise and our worship, oh Lord, you inhabit, your word tells us, and, and, and I believe that you've already touched many, but would you touch us today with the word of the Lord? Help us, God, today with your word, Lord. Let it, Lord, penetrate our hearts and our lives. Oh God, and let something be said here this morning that's going to help every life here and those that hear by way of Facebook, God. Would you touch us now? And I ask for grace to minister your word. Oh, Lord, this is bigger than what a man can do, God. What he's done in the hearts of men takes you. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated if you're here standing. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I don't know uh, what you... Every individual out there listening to this, what you think of Jesus, who he is. But my Bible tells me that he is the almighty God. Amen. 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 Praise God. There's one God and there's none other but he. That is a 
clear teaching in the Word of God throughout the New and the Old Testament. And that one God, according to 1 Timothy 3.16, was manifest in the flesh. That's who Jesus was. He was Emmanuel, God with us. God come in the form of man to be a sacrifice and a savior for the entire human race. 1 John 1, 10, I quote this quite a bit. I love it. It's a very wonderful scripture. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Knowing who he is, you would think that nothing could astonish him. Amen. Nothing could cause him to wonder. you got to understand where he came from. Amen. There's things where he came from that man cannot even imagine the wonders and the glory and the great and marvelous things that he has beheld. So it takes my attention whenever I read that Jesus marveled, which means he wondered. To me, it, it's like it astonished him. What could astonish him? Amen. But the Bible says he marveled because of their unbelief. It was their view of him. It was how they viewed him. Here he was, God manifest in the flesh, and they limited him because they knew him as Joseph and Mary's son, and also his, his fleshly brothers and sisters were there because Mary and Joseph had children after Jesus. Amen. They had, and, and Jesus had earthly siblings, you know, brothers and sisters. And so they looked at him in that light. And he could not, because of that reason, he could not do their many mighty works because of their unbelief, their view of him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I believe it's important when we gather in the name of Jesus. Amen. That we realize that he's here in our midst, Amen. even though we don't see him. It may have all to do with what you receive from the Lord or not. Amen. Praise God. There's one other place that I recall in, in the scriptures where Jesus marveled. It's in Matthew chapter 8, verses 13. Uh, praise God. Verse number 13. It says, and Jesus, well, let's back up to verse number eight. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun there. It says, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Listen to this centurion. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Can I tell you, God loves humility. Amen. He loves someone of a humble heart. And this centurion was expressing that very thing unto Jesus. But he said, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. This is the other time in the scripture that says that Jesus marveled. And he marveled because of this interior's response. Amen. This, this centurion also had a view of Jesus. Amen. That caused him to say the things that he said. Amen. But, but not like those that were of Jesus' hometown. His view of Jesus was much different. He said, I am a man that's, that's of authority. And when I say things to those that are under me, they obey me. Amen. I say to this one, do this, and he does it. I say to another, one, do that, and he does it. What was he telling Jesus? He was telling Jesus, Lord, just say the word. You know what he was acknowledging before Jesus? 
Everything is subject to you. Everything is under you. Amen. In other words, I believe he was acknowledging Jesus. That he was the God of all creation manifested in the flesh. And he didn't even have to physically be present. Amen. To lay, go and lay his physical hand on, on his servant to be healed. But all he had to do, just like when he created the world. All he had to do is speak the word. And everything obeys him. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that blew Jesus away. It caused him to marvel. Amen. Praise God. He marveled. He said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Not in my own people. Amen. That's basically what he was saying. And Jesus said, verse number 13. Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self-same hour. Amen. And that's the word that Jesus gives to each one of us. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. I would encourage you this morning to lift your expectations of Jesus. Yes. And his ability to do and to work in your life. Amen? Amen. He's not just a figure of 2,000 years ago. But he is a God that is alive and well today. Amen? Amen. He rose from the dead, appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos, and told him, I am alive forevermore. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And where two or three are gathered together in my name, he said he would be there in their midst. I don't literally see Jesus with my eyes, but by faith I know he's in this place. Amen? Amen. By faith I know he's in my life. Amen? Because he's the one that has wrought all these great changes in my life. And I'm sure, amen, if you were here... Amen. And those that are here, you can say amen to that amen. of what he's done in your life. Amen. Amen. He's made a way. Though my back was against the wall. Amen. And I thought that it was over like that song they just sang. Amen. He came through and made a way. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I was looking through some scriptures and I felt that the Lord directed me over to the gospel of Luke. And uh, if you look through the Gospel of Luke, you will see where there's three different stories, we'll call them, uh, where Jesus touched people's life. The first one uh, makes reference to a man of Gadara, that is a demoniac. He's filled with devils. And then after that, it talks about a man uh, that is a ruler of the synagogue. By the name of Jairus. And he comes to Jesus. And he is, has a 12 year old daughter. That is at the brink of death. And he wants Jesus to come. And heal his daughter. Amen. And Jesus tells him. He's, he, he, he's going to go. You know, He's going to go and take care of that need. But on the way. There is a woman. That has a need. And Jesus had people all around him. Amen. They were thronging him. They were touching him all over. And as Jesus went through the crowd and the people touching him, this woman that had an issue of blood for many years and has spent all of her living upon physicians and just got worse and worse and worse. There was something inside of her heart. She said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She said that within herself. Amen. And so it was difficult because no doubt she was terribly weak from all the sickness for so very long and just got worse and worse. But she made the effort to push her way through the crowd. Amen. It was difficult. It was hard. But she used all of her strength, no doubt, of what she had. And she began to press to get to Jesus and saying within herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. Amen. And she pressed and touched Jesus' garment. And immediately she was made whole. And the Bible says that Jesus stopped. And said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, people are thronging you. People are touching you. There's many people touching you. He said, somebody touched me. 
Amen. He was talking about touching him in a different kind of a way than what everybody else was touching him. Come on. He was talking about somebody touched me with faith. Amen. Somebody believed that whenever they touched me, amen, that, that, that I was going to do a work in their life. And, and I want you to know, Jesus didn't let her down. Amen? amen? He turned around and he said, who touched me? You know what he was doing? He was looking for a confession. He was looking for that woman to speak up and say, Lord, I was healed when I touched you. You know, it wasn't that Jesus touched uh, her. It was that she touched Jesus. She actually drew virtue out of him by reaching out and touching him. I believe, listen to me, that you can get in a prayer meeting with Jesus. You can reach out to Jesus. And if you have a need, I believe you can actually pull something from the Spirit of the Lord of what you need in your life. I've seen it happen before. Oh, I said, I've seen it happen before. He is there. Amen. And everything that we need is in him. Amen. And he is the same today. Amen. She confessed all of it to the Lord. Amen. And he told her, Amen. Go thy way. Thy faith has made you whole. Amen. The third story that is in that chapter, Luke chapter 8, is about Jairus. Now we read, or we spoke of Jairus just a few minutes ago, right before the woman with the issue of blood. He had beseeched Jesus to come and heal his 12-year-old daughter that was at the brink of death. And so Jesus was tending to this lady with the issue of blood. And we pick it up from there. As he's finishing talking with this woman with the issue of blood, it says in verse number 49, While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. In other words, it's too late. It's too late. But I'm here to tell you, it wasn't too late. Amen. But in their view, the way they were viewing it, it was too late. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the mother, the father and the mother of the maiden. And all well, I wish you to look at the scene that's going on here. Pretty natural. You, you would expect such things. Amen. All wept and bewailed her. But he said, weep not. She's not dead, but sleepeth. Amen. What a thing to say. Amen. And the Bible says, and they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. They laughed him to scorn. Amen. They did not realize, amen, that Jesus was seeing something that they weren't seeing. Amen. He went on to say, and he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat, and her parents were astonished. But, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Again, he told them, she's not dead, she's just asleep. But in the natural, they knew she was dead. They laughed at him for saying she's only asleep. You see, he was looking through a different lens than what they were looking at. They were looking through the natural. That's how we are so often. Amen. You know, God made us with natural senses. He really did. And praise God, we have eyesight. Amen. And I thank God for our eyesight. Amen. It's a good thing to have. Amen. Praise God. We got hearing. We can hear things. Amen. We can smell things. And many of those things are all of those things. Not just many of them. All of them. Well, it's touch. Amen. Whatever sense it is that we have in the natural. Those things play a very important part in our lives. But I want you to know something. Sometimes God steps in, amen, and works a work. And if we're, uh, we're just operating in the natural realm, we can miss what he's wanting to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. I say sometimes God has another plan. Amen? Yes. Praise God. And in this case, he had another plan. He was wanting to do. 
But because people were naturally minded, they were unable to see it. But Jesus, being a spiritual man, amen, saw something they didn't see. Amen. amen. Oh, praise God. Can I tell you, people in the spirit see things that people in the natural don't see. Right. Come on. I said people in the spirit see things uh, differently than those that's operating in the natural realm of what they see. First right. Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 14 says, Now we receive have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. Praise God. These people could not see the things that God was wanting to freely give unto them. He was wanting to freely give unto them this maiden daughter raised from the dead. But they couldn't see it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He went on to say in verse number 14. But the natural man. Receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's why they laughed at Jesus. He said, she's asleep. She's not dead. But they knew he was looking through, through this event, through the natural realm. But Jesus, being a spiritual man, was seeing something different. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. He was seeing a, maid, a maiden arising from her sleep. Amen. He was spiritual. Amen. He was a God manifest in the flesh, but he was picking up on the will of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, sometimes we miss the will of God of what God is wanting to do in our lives because we're not spiritually in tune with him. Amen. Amen. It's not that we're bad people, but we're just thinking naturally. Amen. Can I tell you, sometimes God wants to interrupt the natural way of things and do something supernatural in our lives. Amen. That's why it's so important that we need to quit being carnal and start seeking to be a spiritual person so that we can hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, we need to be able to hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. Praise God. And sometimes in such horrible situations and horrible things, much like this virus going on, I believe that God of heaven is at work, busy doing something great. Amen? Amen. It's not all gloom and doom. It's not all pessimistic. I want you to know something. This virus didn't take God by surprise. I believe God has allowed it. Amen? And he's going to do a work in spite of all the bad things that are going on. He's going to work in some people's lives. And he's going to bring some people to him. Amen? Amen. He sees something at work that people don't see. Come on. Right. Come on. He's doing a work. If we can but uh, get spiritual and understand that God is still at work, no matter what you see and no matter what is going on. Right. Amen? Praise God. He speaks about things. Amen. He speaks about things that do not exist yet. He spoke to Jairus uh, concerning Jairus' daughter. She's not dead. She's just sleeping. Amen. Those were things that were not, that were going to be. Amen. She literally died, folks. She was really dead. Amen. But Jesus saw something. It's kind of like in Hebrews 11 and 7. It says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Noah heard from God. Nobody else was hearing from him. Right. Come on, but Noah heard something. Amen. That people didn't see yet. Amen. He was warned of God of things not seen as yet. Amen. Oh, praise God. God spoke to him and he had an ear to hear God. And you know what? It moved him, amen, to prepare an ark to the saving of his house. Amen. I want you to know the things that are happening in our world. I believe if you're spiritual, your spiritual antennas ought to go up and you ought to know today it's time to seek God. It's time to be close to God. People may not understand you why you're moving with fear to prepare your life to meet your God. But I'm here to tell you, if you're a spiritual person, if you can hear what the Spirit says, it's time to get ready to meet Jesus. Amen. Come on, I'm looking for Jesus to come back in the clouds of heaven. Amen. 
Oh, I know it sounds strange. Some people like these ones in Jairus' house, they'll laugh at you. They'll laugh you to scorn. But I'm here to tell you, I see something in the future. I see something on the horizon. Amen. I sense something in the air. And it's the second coming of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm looking for Jesus to come. Amen. Amen. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. Amen. They're foolishness. They don't make sense. Amen. Amen. And they're spiritually discerned. You've got to get it. Yeah. Come on. You've got to be filled with the Spirit and be sensitive to the Spirit to hear the Spirit of God. Every one of us are prone to gravitating back to those natural senses that we have. Come on. Something bad happens in our life and we see it and fear just jumps up in our hearts. Amen. We need to have that spiritual sense. Amen. And to realize that voice, that ear, rather to hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. That God is doing something. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 4, 17, referencing the Lord, He quickens the dead. In other words, He makes the dead alive. And He calls those things which be not as though they were. Amen. You got to understand, something may not be at the present. Amen. But whenever He speaks, it becomes. Amen. He brings it to pass. He operates like that. And if you're walking by sight, or you're walking by just what you hear. Amen. Or you're walking by your feelings. Amen. You may feel sick today. Amen. Don't just listen to that. That pain that you feel. Amen. But look to the God of heaven. And know that there may be something he's wanting to do in your life. Amen. To change your situation. Amen. But you've got to get spiritual. Amen. You've got to get in tune with him. You've got to start listening to him. Amen. Yes. You'll never hear him in the natural. Man. Come on, you'll never hear him in the natural. We need to seek the Lord with all of our hearts. Amen. Praise God. It was because people were natural in their thinking that they crucified our Lord and Savior. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 8, it said none of the princes of this world knew. Amen. They did not know him. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. They knew what they were doing, but they really didn't know what they were doing. That's what Paul is telling the Corinthians. That's why Jesus on the cross, he prayed for him, those whom were crucifying him. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. If they had truly understood but they were natural thinking and did not perceive the thing that was going on actually. Amen? That they had the Lord of glory before them. Yeah. Do you understand what He could have done to them? He could have spoke a word and obliviated them. That's right. Amen? But He came for that purpose. He came for that reason. He was doing something that men didn't see. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Peter said this in Acts 3, 17. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance you did it, as did your rulers. Amen. They crucified him through ignorance. Amen. Paul was vehemently against the church before his conversion. And the Bible says he was a blasphemer and a persecutor and an injurious, an insulter. Amen. But I obtained mercy, he said, because I did it Ignorantly in, yes. in unbelief. Amen. He did it ignorantly in unbelief. He was ever so religious. But he was as religious as he was. He was ignorant in what he was doing. He was persecuting the very church of the living God. He was, per he was persecuting the very God that he was professing to uh, be living for. Amen. That's right. Come on. That's who Jesus was. He was that God of the Old Testament. Amen. And Paul was very zealous for him. He said in Romans, he said, they have a zeal uh, of God, but not according to knowledge. Amen. You've got to understand it's not enough to be have just a zeal of God. Amen. There's a lot of people that's got a zeal of God. 
Amen. He says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Amen. Praise God. A lot of people are zealous toward God. But God wants them to be in His truth. Amen. Amen. He wants them uh, to know Him. Amen. Yes. In the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Unfortunately, a lot of people are afraid uh, to approach unto God in His power. Amen. Oh, I thank God for opening my understanding where I saw that I could have the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost like they got it in the Bible. Yes, I'm glad that I found out that God wants me to have more than just religion. He wants me to have a relationship with Him. And that relationship being a powerful relationship. Amen. Amen. He wants you to have more than just ceremony and just religion in your life. He wants you to know Him in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. But a lot of people are fearful. That's where we're going to back up to Luke chapter 8 where we talked about the first story. I just mentioned it briefly about a demoniac. I wish you would read this and, and li listen to these people's response to Jesus. Praise God. Amen. This man, I'm not going to read it all because of the length of it. Amen. But there was a man in the country of Gadara. Amen. And he was a very frightening person. We don't know all of his past, why, why or how he got in the place that he was in. But when we read about him in the scriptures, he's naked. He has no clothes on. He's living in tombs. He's cutting himself. He's self-afflicting himself. Amen. Uh, destroying his own life. The countryside is, is terrorized by this man. He's a, he lives in the tombs. I don't know to what extent he was, but he might very well possibly have been cannibalistic. Who knows? He lived in the graveyard. Amen. He screamed and he cried. He was a wild man that was possessed with many devils. And the Bible says, amen, that they would chain him. They would catch him and chain him. And by the power of those evil spirits that was in him, he would actually break the fetters and the chains under the power of the devil. And the country was terrorized. With him, I can just imagine all the little children that would go to bed at night and they would lay down and they'd hear his screams throughout the region. Amen. And they'd run to their mom and their dad and they would cry, Look, is he going to get me? Amen. Could you imagine all the terrorizing that would go on? Any man that can break fetters and chains with their hands has got to have some kind of a great power in his life. And this was an evil power. Man, and he cried, and he was bound. He was a, a prisoner of his own self, probably of his own making. Amen. He was in horrible shape, and the country and the region about were no doubt terrified of him. Amen. He was the terror of the region. Amen. Oh, but he was a prime candidate for Jesus to save. Yes. Come on. Oh, he was a prime candidate for Jesus to save. Because Jesus headed his way. And Jesus ended up stepping on the shores of Gadara. Amen. And when he did, here comes this man with this legions of demons. And the demons cry out, Are you come to torment us before the time? I want you to know they recognized who he was. Yes, come on. Just like that centurion that realized who Jesus was, these devils also realized he is the power over everything and over all of us. Amen. Amen. And so they came and they asked Jesus, they said, Lord, don't cast us out into the deep, but cast us out into those pigs. There was a whole herd of thousands of pigs. And, and Jesus said, all right, he gave them leave. And they came out and they entered into those hogs. And the Bible says that those hogs, you understand, if you look at the response of those hogs, you'll see what was inside of this man. The Bible says they ran violently down a steep place 
of the hill and were drowned in the depths of the sea. Amen? That man was filled with violence. He was filled with violence. Amen? But just the spoken word of Jesus come out. He's the authority of all principality, power, and might. Amen. He can take care of any problem in our lives. Yes. Amen. I'm telling you. But some people are afraid to get near to the power of God. Amen. Because it's beyond the natural realm. Oh, I want you to know God does not want us to be afraid of His power. His power is not to destroy us. His power is sent into our lives to save us from our sins. Amen. He doesn't want us to be afraid of approaching unto Him. Amen. But these people, unfortunately, they were fearful. They were fearful. I'm going to begin reading in verse 33. Luke 8, 33. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Praise God, clothed and in his right mind. And the Bible says, and they were afraid. I want you to know, they were afraid of that man before Jesus got a hold of him. Let me keep on reading. It says, they also which saw it told them by what means that the possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. You know what happened? That just seems plum weird, doesn't it? And then here it is. They have this terrible problem. They have this man, this maniac, this wild man running around terrorizing the community. And then just a few moments time, Jesus steps on the shore. Amen. And delivers them from their horror story. Amen. And when they realize what Jesus has done, they realize that a power, more powerful than anything we've ever experienced has just stepped on our shore. Amen. And it Scared them to wits in. Amen. If he can do that. Amen. They didn't know how to handle it. They were so taken by fear. They were so taken by fear. They said Jesus. Amen. Would you please leave us. We don't want you to stay here. And it was fear that caused them to want Jesus to leave. Guess what he did. He left. He left. Can I tell you? Jesus is a supernatural God. He does supernatural things. He fills people with the Holy Ghost. And when they're filled with the Holy Ghost, they begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives others. And some people are afraid to approach into this because it steps beyond the natural realm. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus don't want you to be afraid of Him. He wants you to approach unto Him. He wants you filled with the supernatural experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's some people run from it because it's beyond the natural. It is, that, it is beyond the natural. Amen. God has always been a supernatural God. And I will also warn. Amen. Praise God not just to follow any sign. But I'm here to tell you. I preached it Wednesday night. Amen. That there's going to come false Christs and false prophets. In the end time here. And they're going to show so great signs and wonders. That if it were possible they would seek the very elect. But that does not mean that God has ceased being supernatural. Amen. Praise God when things are in harmony with the word of God. Then we know that it's God. Amen. Praise God. It's only when things step outside of the word of God. That we do not follow signs. But signs are supposed to follow believers. Amen. Jesus said, in my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. And then they'll take up serpents. If they drink in a deadly thing, and it shall not harm them. And they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Those signs follow believers. Amen? Yes. I'm glad to be in a church that sees those great.
great things, aren't you? Come on, I'm glad to be a part. I'm, I don't just have a, a religion. I have a relationship yeah. with God. Amen? Yeah. Come on, I've got a God in my life that's a powerful God, a mighty God. And He's Woo. the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't want to let fear keep me back from approaching unto God. My dear little wife. Amen. Amen. <laughs> She has a liking for raising poodles. <laughs> she likes to raise poodles. Amen. I'm her handyman. I get the work. <laughs> and we share the money. Praise God. If she had her way, she'd have them in the house probably. But I kind of hadn't gone that far. She hadn't gotten me into that. But she has managed to get me, amen, to help her get her. I say a house is one of those nice buildings. And I've been, I hung, I put insulation in it and electrical wiring in it and, and, I, and, I, and I sheet rocked it and uh, put some nice floor covering in it and, those dogs got a nice place. I put an air conditioner in it. Amen. I put a, I put a, a one of those uh, doors. Amen. What they call doggy the doggy doors. Uh, doggy doors. I put a doggy door, and I got a yard that they can go out that's fenced in. And she's got a couple of those dogs right now. She's had more than that. At times, she likes dealing with them. They're poodles. They're purebred poodles. They're really nice dogs. They're good dogs. Amen. Praise God, but uh, hey amen. I, I fix them a nice place in case I ever get in the doghouse. <laughs> it's got air conditioning for the summer and it's got heating uh, for the winter. I mean, they're cozy in there. They can come in and out of that doggy door and go out in the yard and do their and run and play and have exercise and all this kind of stuff. Hey amen. It keeps them out of my house. Amen. Praise God. I don't mind doing all those things. But some time back, some time back, my wife bought her a dog. And he's just, I'm telling you, he's talking about a pretty dog. Now this is really a pretty dog. And she's down to two dogs now. Amen. Or I'm down to two dogs. <laughs> Praise God. And I've, been, I've tried to discourage her from getting any more, you know. That's a pretty good crew right there. But she got her a beautiful male dog. I mean, it's a really pretty dog. She paid a lot of money for that dog. She already had a red one. And this one's chocolate, chocolate black color. You know, it's a beautiful, beautiful dog. She bought it when it was little. And it's grown up and it's fixing to be a daddy. That's how old it is, about a year and a half old. And she's got some puppies that one of these days are going to be arriving here shortly. But this dog... Amen, it's very strange. He's a good dog, a wonderful dog. Amen, but he's very, very different. You know, he's not real courageous. And, uh, you know, every dog that she's had, she, those dogs with a, they love that doggy door. They, they lickety split. They go in and out of that doggy door. Got a little ramp outside of it where they can uh, go down that ramp out of that doggy door, in and out of the building as they want to. Amen. Praise God. And this one dog's name is Marshall. He's a, he's a, I'm telling you, he's a, he's a keeper. He's a good dog. He really is. I like him a lot. He's a good dog. But there's one thing about Marshall. I just have not been able to figure out that Marshall. He is terrified of that doggy door. Amen. I have tried and tried to get Marshall to get out of that to train him to, to, to get out of that building by way of going through that doggy door. I ended up having to tie the doggy door open and leave it open so he'll go in and out. He don't have no problem going down the ramp. You know, up and down, in and out of the building. You don't have a no problem with that. It's that doggy door. He, he's brave enough to stick his nose. That, see, they lift that doggy door up and it comes up over their back. It's got a magnet on each side that whenever it closes, it, it keeps it shut so the cool air will stay in the building and the heat will stay in the building depending on the weather. But Marshall, 
he, he's gotten brave enough. The other dogs, even puppies, run in and out of that doggy door. But Marshall has a hang-up. Marshall goes up to the doggy door. Amen. And he sticks, he pushes it far enough to get it on the top of his head. And he sits there with it on the top of his head. But he won't let it go on his back. I've sat out there and left him out there for the whole day. Because I wanted him to realize this is not going to hurt you. You know, you need to learn how to use this doggy door. And I'm telling you, I have left him out there a whole day. I went out there and sat outside and sat down and said, come on, Marshall. Come on, Marshall. You know, I tried to encourage him, tried to give him some kind of treat, tried to get him to come home, and he sits there all day long. The rest of the dogs are playing in the yard. They're having a day old time, a good time, you know. They're running around and jumping and having a good time. And Marshall's sitting there going, ooh, 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 ooh. He just sits there and whines. He can go back in. There's water inside. There's food inside. Everything he wants. But he can't get past going through that doggy door. I'm talking about he's a grown dog today and he still don't want to go through the doggy door. I never have gotten him. He reminds me of a lot of Christians, a lot of people that are embracing Christianity. God's telling them, come on, I got some more stuff for you. Amen. And then you don't understand because you're sitting back and you're satisfied with just being religious. Come on, come on out. Come on and get full of the Holy Ghost. Woo! You don't know the glorious things that's waiting for you. But you're afraid. Yes. You don't know what's going to happen to you when you get this Holy Ghost and you start speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit gives the utterance, I'm here to tell you, it's not going to hurt you. Just go on through the doggy door. Come on, just go on into the kingdom of God. Amen. It's good. It's glorious. You're going to experience some wonderful, wonderful things that you will never experience unless you come on through. Come on. That's, That's right. 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 I'm preaching to somebody today that you got all kinds of religion, but God's trying to take you to a deeper place with Him. But you've got to be willing. You've got to get rid of the fear. Come on, you're serving a supernatural God. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're serving one. Amen? You walk on the dirt. He spoke into existence every day. He's a creator. He does the miraculous. Yes, he does. Amen? And He wants to help you. But you gotta get past traditions. You gotta get past just being religious. You gotta seek him with all your heart. Come on, you need to press on through the door. Amen. He's got wondrous things for you. Wondrous things. He loves you. And just like I sat out there and told Marshall, come on, Marshall. Jesus is sitting there saying, Come on, come on, there's more for you of what I have for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God has more. God has more. Amen. Amen. He wants the best for you. He went to Calvary so the Holy Ghost could come. Amen. I actually heard a person one time, a preacher on the radio. I was driving in another town and I had the radio on. I just happened to turn it on and I heard a preacher say, I heard a preacher say, does not do miracles today. Amen. He said if any miracle is done, hey, it's the devil. That's what he said. I heard him say it. I want you to know something. Something goes off in me. And then when I hear stuff like that, I'm here to tell you Jesus is still doing the miraculous. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Come on. He's still giving the Holy Ghost. He's still healing the sick. He's still raising the dead uh, when the occasion is needed. Amen? Yeah. Oh, but the natural man will never perceive the things of the Spirit of God when God is getting ready to do something. Amen? Yeah. You'll laugh on the scorn just like they did in Jairus' household. You'll deny it. You say it, it won't happen. It's because you're naturally thinking. Amen? You're going by your senses. But we serve a supernatural God. And He Amen. will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you will believe Him. Amen. He'll heal your body if you have faith and believe Him. Amen. Amen. Come on. He'll provide you with provision if you will believe Him and look to Him. Praise God. He that comes to God, you must believe that He is and that He is a reward.
corner of them that diligently seek Him. Amen? Amen. He's the same. He's the same. Stands at the door, like it says in Revelation. I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, hear my voice. Come on, you got to hear what the Holy Ghost says. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, you've probably seen that picture of Jesus standing outside of the door knocking. If you'll notice in that picture, that's what he's talking about, this, that verse of Scripture in Revelation. I stand at the door and knock. There's no doorknob on that door because it's got to be open from the inside. You're the one that's got to open it. You're the one that's got to come to the door. You're the one that's got to hear His voice. You've got to hear the Spirit calling you. Amen? And you've got to open the door. Amen? Yes. Come on, you've got to open the door. Amen. If you can be like that woman with the issue of blood, you can receive a healing. Amen. There's people that Jesus wouldn't touch, but that lady touched Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, whatever the case, whether he touches you or you get in prayer and touch him, what does it really matter? The thing that matters is, is that you get your need met. Amen. Yes. Come on, and he's glorified. Yes. Amen. He'll do it. He's still God. He's still on the throne. He's as alive today as he has ever been. And he'll be the same tomorrow. Amen. Yes, amen. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And so I'm thinking about a story in Mark. Amen. Jesus had just got through feeding the multitudes. He just got through feeding the multitudes. The loaves and fishes. Amen. And he sent his disciples on. He sent his disciples on in a ship to go to the other side. Amen. And he stayed behind to send the people away. Amen. Praise God. And during the night, praise God, the, sh the, sh the sea got robust. The waves got high. And they were in trouble. And the Bible says, and when the evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary to them. They were in trouble, like some of you are in trouble tonight. Mm -hmm. huh? They were in trouble. It didn't seem like Jesus was nowhere around. But you know what? He saw them when they was in the trouble. And he headed their way, just like he saw Legion. Before he ever got there, he headed his way. Amen. And he sees you and he knows where you're at. It. And he's, he heads our way. Yes, he he saw them toiling and rowing. For the wind was contrary to them. About the fourth watch of the night. He cometh unto them walking upon the sea. But listen to this. And he and would have passed by them. <laughs> oh, it's important for you to understand and realize. Jesus sees your name. He'll head your direction. But if you don't cry out. To him, if you don't respond to him, if you don't believe and reach out to him, he'll go to somebody that will listen. That's right. Come on, he would have passed them by, but they cried out. They cried out. They cried out after Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. The disciples, their hearts were sunk. All their hopes was in Jesus. And now they watched him be crucified. The one that they, that we thought that he was going to be the one that was going to redeem Israel. Their hearts had sunk with despair. The Bible says in Luke 24, 13, And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things, which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk in her stead? <laughs> they don't know it's Jesus. Somehow he blinded their understanding where they couldn't understand that it was him. But it was him. It was him. He joined himself. They're sad. They're down and out. Their Messiah that they had hoped in has died and been 
been killed. And they saw these horrific things. But the Bible says in verse 27, talking about Jesus began at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though, listen to this, this is important. And he made as though he would have gone further. <laughs> You've got to understand a supernatural visitation is happening here. Come on, I said he's a supernatural God. And they're, they're getting, they don't know it. They, they're thinking naturally. There's a supernatural visitation happening right before their eyes. And their understanding is darkened where they don't understand it. <laughs> Amen. And he made as though he would have gone further. He was walking with them. And they're saying in verse number 32, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us? Their hearts, while Jesus was talking to them, amen, there was something about what was being said that was really stirring inside of them. Because you know what? He was speaking spirit things to them. Amen. They were natural. They was, as far as they were concerned, it was all over. But Jesus started speaking spirit things to them. Yes. Spiritual words to them. Expanding to them how the scriptures had to be fulfilled. And they said, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us? Amen. And he would have gone on farther. He got to a certain place and he would have gone on. He would have gone on farther. But they didn't want to go of him. They didn't want to go of him. But they constrained him saying, abide with us. For it is toward evening. And the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and broke it. And gave to them. And their eyes were open. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Amen. Oh, praise God. Why didn't they let Jesus go on? Why didn't they that never saw the great thing that they saw? Can I tell you? Jesus will hear your heart's cry. He will hear your saddened heart. And He will come your way. But it's important for you to cry out to Him. Come on. Don't be afraid of the supernatural of God. He is still supernatural today. And He'll do supernatural things in your life if you will seek Him and believe Him. Oh, praise God. Matthew, the last thing I'm going to talk about. 46 tells a story. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. I'm not going to read it all. But he sat there by the highway side. He was blind. He couldn't see. Just like today, we can't see Jesus. I can't see Jesus, but I know He's here. You believe He's here? Yeah. Come on, if you believe in this Jesus, you're going to have to walk by faith because you're not going to see Him at this time physically. The Bible says the heavens have received Him until the time of the restitution of all things. But we're talking to you about Him. And He's in this place. He said He would be here today. And He's there at home with you too. Hallelujah. Amen, if you're a believer. Amen. Just like Bartimaeus though. We're going to have to believe. Amen. The preacher saying that Jesus is in the place. The preacher is saying Jesus is passing by. And Bartimaeus hears the crowd. Here comes Jesus of Nazareth. Well Bartimaeus has never seen him. Well neither have you. Amen. But Bartimaeus he hears about Jesus. What Jesus can do to change his situation. And so Bartimaeus Hearing that Jesus was passing by. And then he begins to cry out. Jesus, the son of David. Have mercy on me. I've never seen you. But I believe you can heal me. I hear about all the great things that you do, Lord. And I know you can help me in my situation. Amen. Praise God. He's met with everybody telling him. Shut up and be quiet. You're making a scene. But the Bible says he cried the more. Can I tell you? You've got to be determined. Yeah. You've got to be determined. Don't let anything stop you from getting what you need from God. Yeah, man. A good Amen. word. Don't let anything stop you. Amen. He's a supernatural God. And he can do whatever he's done in our lives. When the doctors have given up, he's still in control. He's still our healer. In fact, he is 
our physician. Amen. And the best one ever. Best one. The best one ever. Amen. Oh my. Lord, the man's began to cry, and the people said, You stop it. You quit that. But he was determined. And the Bible said, listen to me, this is so important. Barnabas got Jesus' attention. And the Bible says, Jesus called for him. <laughs> oh, praise God. Something's going to happen. God, something's going to happen. Amen. You know what? Barnabas was confident something's going to happen. So you know what he did? He was a beggar before, wore a beggar's garment. And the Bible says, he pulled his garment off. You know what he was saying by that action? I'm not going to be the beggar when I get back. Come on, I'm going to be a different man when Jesus touches me. When he called me, he called me to come. I, you know what he's doing? He has the same thing in his heart. That woman with the issue of blood was saying, I'm not going to be the same when I touch him. When I get to him, he's going to change my situation. He had faith and he came to Jesus. And out of all the things that Jesus asked him, he said, what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> Have you ever heard people say, he knows what I need? He knows what I need. Yeah, he knows what he, you need, but he wants you to tell him what you need. Amen? He wants you to tell him, cry out to him, Jesus, that I might receive my sight. Amen. And Jesus healed Bartimaeus. Yeah. And Jesus will touch your need. Jesus will help you. He is a supernatural God. And above all things, Jesus wants you filled with this Holy Ghost baptism. Yes. And yes, it's supernatural. I'll tell you what you're going to get when you get the Holy Ghost. The first thing that you're going to get that nobody really has to even teach you about because it is what is coming inside of you. You are going to be filled full, overflowing with the love of God. Amen? Oh, praise God. Amen. You'll be surprised. Oh, hey, you begin to love your enemies. And bless those that curse you. Amen. When you get full of Jesus. Amen. Come on. It's the spirit that was in Jesus. Coming inside of you. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost is. Amen. And he wants you to have it. And when you are actually baptized with the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about just having the Holy Ghost move on you. He's done a lot of things for a lot of people. He delivered me from smoke and drink and carousing. All that filth before I was ever filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, that was Him. And yes, He's done wonderful things in your life, no doubt. But He wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you farther than you are today. And He Amen. wants you to be filled with the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Amen. And somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Lord. Put your hands to the Lord. If you will seek the Lord, He will reward you openly. If you seek Him with all of your heart. Amen. I preach the best that I know how to preach to you today. Jesus is a supernatural God. You can live, live in the realm of the natural. We need those natural senses, you know, to operate in life. I'm not criticizing those senses. Come on. If I hear a train coming down the track, it warns me to get out of the tracks. Thank God for hearing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If I see something that's tragic, I want to get out of the way of it. Those eyes are handy. If I smell smoke in my house at night, it'll help me to keep me, my family from perishing. It's a handy sense to have. Amen. To make it up and make sure there's not a fire going on. Amen. But there's sometimes what I'm preaching to you about today. There's times when God wants to step in and into your life. And if you're only naturally thinking, amen, you will miss what God is trying to do in your life. He wants you to have more than religion. He wants you to have a relationship with Him in the yes. Spirit. Amen? amen. That's what I'm preaching to you about today. And whatever you face in your life, there is hope. Amen. Because there is Jesus. Amen? Amen. And He is still on the throne. If our musicians will come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's still hope. Amen. You may not be in this building today. You don't have to be in this building. Thank God for the time that we will be able to gather again. 
and worship together. We love that. We want that. Amen. But there's a God that's right there with you. If you will have faith, if you will believe, He can change situations in your life. Amen. I'm telling you though, He steps beyond the natural and He does the supernatural. He's fixing to come back from heaven in a supernatural way. He's going to appear in the clouds of heaven. Amen. Amen. Come on, and He's going to come after a people that's gotten ready to meet Him. Amen. A people that's born again of the water spirit. Obey Acts 2.38. And living for Him. Living a sober, sound, Holy Ghost filled life. Amen. Will you be one of them? Amen. If you got trouble in your life, Jesus is there. If you cry out to Him. Amen. Would you worship with these? Seek the Lord today. Would you let God touch your life? If you'll approach Him with faith, you'll find Him to be so very near. He is there. And He loves you today. Amen. He loves you so much. He came in the flesh to give His life so that you can be reconciled to Him. And that is that experience of the Holy Ghost that we're talking about today. God bless you.
you all yeah. receive the word of God today with gladness. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we dismiss this service, we just ask that each and every one of you still be mindful that the, the, the works of, of, of God must still go on. The, the, there are missionaries in the field that still need uh, money to continue the work of God. So we ask that each of you would uh, take advantage of the electronic tithing that we've made available. Um, and we ask that each, each one of you just continue to pray for them. If you can't give, pray for them. Pray for those you know, at, here at the church that are still continuing to do the work. We, we need your prayer. We need your, your, you to be mindful to take us, call out our names to the Lord. As we call out your names as well. We ask that you just enjoy your, the day in the Lord and you are dismissed in the fear of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.